Hey guys, welcome back to another Leak Code Problem Solver tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to solve question 239, a hard problem which is asking to find the maximum within a sliding window. So you're given an array nums and you're given an integer k, which basically represents the size of the window. Now, this window starts at the beginning of the array and it's of length k and it just repeats until it gets to the end. So obviously, if we wanted to implement this window, in something like uh, in TypeScript, well, we take in k and we'd use a left and right pointer, start them both at 0, 0. And right is the main one which we care about. This is going to be our sort of leading pointer, so we do while right is less than nums.length. We're going to add one to right every time. And what we want to do is we check the window length. Or more specifically, what we can do is, well, for this example here, you can see right is at zero. We don't want to increment left. You want to keep it at the first one. Basically, right, left, left, right is the bounds. So when they're both at zero, we only want to move right. When right is at one, move it again. Right is at two, move it again. But when right is at two, well, now we know the length of this index, of this a window is going to be 2 to 0 which is free inclusive so once right is at 2 we also want to add add 1 to left so we'll do if right minus 1 is let's just say greater than or equal to k or we can just say if right is greater than k I think that should work so no, that's not going to work yeah, so we need to do if right plus 1 is greater than or equal to k. So what this is going to do is, well, when right is at point 2 for this example, index 2, right plus 1 is going to be 3, and this is greater than or equal to k. So then what it's going to do is move left along. So as we move right to here, left also gets incremented, so then we go here. And yeah, that's basically what we do. So this is just essentially implementing this slider window. Pretty simple, it's not too hard. And uh, we can just print this by using the slice function. So I'll just show you guys an example. nums.slice or splice, no slice. And we'll do left and right plus one. Since right, since the right bound of slice is exclusive. So I'm going to show you guys what this is going to print. And for now, let's just return nothing. Uh, console.log max slider window of this input array where k is free. OK. And okay, so here we go. You can see that we've got well, it starts off, it just starts adding one. So while we're in this sort of phase, before we get to this phase, there's no point checking the maximum. And it's only once we get into this phase that we really want to actually care about things. So essentially, what this question is asking for is all of the windows here, windows given by this, we want to find the maximum of all these windows. Okay, So how are we going to do that? Well you can see the maximum of this first one is free, maximum of the second one is also free, maximum of this third one, well free is gone now so it becomes 5 and so on and you can see that's how we get our output like this. But it seems a bit inefficient to keep checking right because if we just use a linear search so using linear search to find maximum will cause time complexity of O of, well, it's linear in here, but this is also linear outwards, so that's going to end up being O of n squared, which is not the best idea, because usually a two-pointer approach is we want to do them in O of n. So what we need to use here is something called a monotonically uh, monotonic Q. Essentially, like a monotonic stack, which you use to keep track of a maximum index when putting in items into a stack. Monotonic queue is essentially just going to allow us to 
keep track of what the largest item is as well as the second third fourth and just keep track of the largest items in order so that if we delete the leftmost when it goes out of bounds we'll still have the next largest and so on so it's pretty simple really what we need to do is the important thing is we store the indices of the largest index rather than the actual value the reason we do that is so that we can check if the largest value is out of bounds then we can remove it so I'll show you guys an example of this let's just leave our queue as uh, it's empty at the start and what I'll do is I will just uh, yeah okay so I'm gonna print the window so that we can actually see how items are added so when one gets added we will just put one in the queue and this is actually going to be a monotonically non-increasing queue so the largest item is going to be at position zero like so I'll do it in black just so it's easier so one gets added then three gets added so a three well three is larger than one so we will not we don't delete one though because that's a bit silly we want to put three here and one there and essentially this means that we can check whether three exists and sorry we do we do actually delete one because there's no point keeping a one here when we know that this is at a lower index and yeah so we can just put a three here instead because this is always going to be a great index so it's going to get removed later and it's great so it's overall just a better number than this okay then what we do is we get a minus one and this time we don't delete the three we keep the minus one here because it is of a greater index so therefore there's a chance that there's always a chance that we don't have to actually if this three gets deleted we use this minus one instead and this carries on we get this minus three now and you can see next item we get is minus three so the index the array becomes three minus one minus three like so and then what happens is well you see when we get to this the three actually gets deleted so we get a new index of five but before we actually add this we need to update our queue by removing this three because it's no longer in the window and we can do that because well if we get an item which is larger than it then it would have displaced this three and if it item smaller then we just leave the three in and these are going to be stored as indices which means we can just check whether the top item in the queue or we can just keep going this way and check whether the item in the queue is of a lower index than left which is leftmost index in our window and if it is then we just remove it and then we get this extra five which is actually better than three so it gets moved all the way it deletes all of these items as well because five is an overall better candidate than these so it deletes all of them and moves straight up into there like so and hopefully you can see the monotonically non-increasing or decreasing like nature of this if we get an item lower than it it's going to go after but if we get an item greater that just sort of deletes all the items before it and gets inserted like that so it's quite a difficult concept to understand one type cues are a bit confusing but once you get them they make a lot of sense so we just sort of implement this in JavaScript now now what we'll do is we we'll, we get a new number and I'll just call this right or nums right and what we want to do is insert this into the queue insert this num into the correct position in queue like so so like I said to find the correct position to insert we just need to keep going we need to start from the rightmost and just keep deleting items until we get to an item which is actually uh, of a greater value so for example when we had uh, okay let's just have another example here so let's say our queue currently looks like three 
one, zero, and we got a two. So if we got a two, this would have to go into here. So similar to insertion sort, we literally just have to insert it, find a position to insert this. Okay. And the way we're going to do this is, well, we can just use a while loop. So while the length of Q is greater than zero, because we don't want to be trying to access something when there's nothing in a queue. While the length of Q is greater than zero, and let's make a new variable, let position to insert equals, let's call this Q.length. So initially, the position to insert this new item is going to be over here, this index, which is the Q.length. And we just want to check, so, okay, wait, hold on. We'll start at q.length minus one so that we can compare it against this. And we'll do, while well, q.length is greater than equal to zero, and q position to insert. So we're comparing while the item at this position is, we will say, less than or equal to, because even if it's equal to, this item is going to be a better candidate because it's of a greater index, if that makes sense. Q position to insert is less than or equal to num. While this is true, then we just want to remove, we can use a splice, we want to remove the item at position to insert. Ah, oh, I've just realized something. We don't have to use position to insert, we can just delete items, which we're just index the final item in the list and while this is less than or equal to num then we can just delete this final item so we'll just do q dot pop and that will delete the final item and then of course when the final item isn't the isn't greater than or equal to num so when we get to free well this condition is going to be false so it's not going to pop and then what we can do is simply just add it to q so q dot push num but remember we don't actually push the num we push the index for a later thing and that's also going to mean these are stored as indexes which means we actually need to do this nums final item in queue like so okay there we go hopefully that made sense i know it's a bit difficult to understand but we're basically just inserting this into correct position in queue remove items in queue which are lower than that's essentially what this does and yeah so now this 2 is going to get inserted here but before we do that we also need to check remove items from front of the queue which are out of bounds and to be out of bounds well it's always going to be within the right bound but the left bound of a window is constantly moving to the right and so we just need to check whether we just need to remove the first items in the queue if they are if the index of them is less than less left bound. So we'll do the same sort of thing while the length of Q is greater than zero so that we're not trying to access something and Q Q zero, the index of the first item in the queue is less than if it's equal to if it's equal to length, that's also okay, because that means it's still barely in the window, but if it's not, then Q0, if the index of that is less than left, then we need to remove this item from the queue. So we can do Q dot, we can't do pop since that's going to remove it. I believe we can do insert or shift. Yeah, shift is what we need. Ah, uh, one sec. And I can't remember if shift returns it or just modifies it. Let's see. So define an array like that. And if we use the shift function, yeah, okay, so it modifies the array. Okay, that's good. So yeah, this is just going to delete all items which are out of bounds. So we delete the items out of bounds and we also insert the new item. And since this is a monotonically decreasing queue, all we have to do now is 
well, monotonically non-increasing Q. It's actually strictly non-increasing since if it's equal to, we just delete it. So technically, we're not going to have uh, we're not going to have any duplicate numbers. So it is a monotonically decreasing Q with updated bounds. Therefore, maximum of current window will be given by Q, the first item in Q. And we know there's always going to be at least one item in Q because we added it in here. So we can get maximum is equal to Q0. Remember, this is an index though, so we want to do nums Q0 like so. And yeah, that's basically it. So hopefully you guys can understand that. We've got the maximum within each window. Remember I'm doing it inside of this loop because this loop gets activated once write has reached a sufficient length of the window. And once we've done that, let's just create a new array for our output. You can just add this to the output like so. All right, there we go. So I suppose we can test it on this first. And oh, it's a return the output. All right, there we go. And you can see it gives us the correct answer here. So this is how we do it, implementing a monotonically decreasing Q. Hopefully my explanation made sense. I know it was quite difficult, but monotonically decreasing Q, that's the main thing you need to understand. And yeah, we get a good runtime, we're definitely in the upper percentile, beating 84.09%. Let's look at how these work. So, yeah, you can see these are still using a monotonically decreasing Q, and same sort of thing here. Instead of plus one on this side, they've just moved it over to the right side. But yeah, this is essentially the same algorithm, and this is the 90th percentile. So, yeah, this was how you complete. Leak code problem 239, sliding window maximum. These are monotonically decreasing Q. See you guys in a future tutorial. Bye.